We recording right, you motherfuckers. You asked for it, you got it. You've got me as the interviewee in the seat. So um, let's see how we get on you. I, I don't mind doing other people's interviews, as in being a podcast guest and other people's on other people's interviews. I feel like it keeps me sharp. I don't I don't find it uh, a relaxing experience. I think when you're the interviewee, it's like when you're an interviewee, don't like we're under no illusion how di- for people who haven't done it, how difficult that is. Um, even for people who do it all the time, or for people who like who have come onto the HR podcast, for example, and they're doing it's their first ever podcast, and it's happened quite a few times. It is not easy. It can be quite nerve wracking. Um, but coming back to a point, I don't like. I don't. I don't really like to be. I, I, the idea of me doing this, so being the interviewee on HR myself, just me. There's no guest, for example. It's just me. You're gonna hear my dulcet tones for the entire podcast. It's not gonna be an hour and a quarter, by the way. It's not gonna be over an hour. Uh, it just seems a bit self-indulgent. But, but with that said, some people have asked for it over t- over over the years, and recently a couple of people have asked recently again for it. It's also been suggested to me a bunch of times as uh, something that it would be good to do that uh, listeners and viewers would enjoy and would not be put off by. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens. The other thing is, um, occasionally, you know, I, 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 like, I like to put out podcasts once a week, right? At least once a week. Um, and some, and it's, it can be quite challenging to line up the guests and get the, and get the schedule bang on. Um, and also, you throw in there when guests postpone, or, or for whatever reason, or if I have to change something around, postpone a, uh, a podcast. Sometimes there's gaps. Then uh, you have to you have to bear in mind you right for those for those people who don't know. I do this in my spare time, of which I don't have a lot of spare time. I've got uh, I've got a day job, <laughs> so I do this outside of my day job. And uh, you got the hour, you got the hour and a quarter, or two hours, or sometimes three hours podcasts that I record. That's like the easiest bit. It's the most enjoyable bit. Talking to the guests, learn the knowledge, your experiences. Um, the the time consuming bit is everything goes on around it. I, I, people who have who have been thinking about starting up anything like this, a podcast, any kind of show like this, need to be aware of this. So it's all of the things go around it. I just mentioned um, uh, sh- uh, you know scheduling get scheduling and guests. And you think oh well that's that can't take up a lot of time. That's easy. You just say, "Hey, guest, um, yeah, let's. Um, what about this day and time?" And that's not easy because one, you got to get to that point in the conversation. Who's the guest? You got to find the guest, right? Or if a guest has been recommended to you. You got to speak to that guest. You got to decide if you want them on the podcast or not. Because believe it or not, every guest that gets suggested to throw my way, they don't all come on. Like. Um, some guests are suggested my way, and they don't even know they've been suggested, and they may not even want to do it. Other guests are just not suited to this kind of podcast. Um, and, I, and sometimes when that happens, I'll refer them on to other other podcasts that may suit them. Different different types, different styles, you know. Uh, yeah, so you've got all of the, that interaction with the guest or the potential guest, which is back, you know, email, tennis, text message, tennis, phone call, WhatsApp, tennis, back and forth. Then you get to the point of set, setting up and scheduling the the, uh, the actual podcast. Sometimes it, it happens on the day and time that is specified. Most of the time it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Then we record the podcast, right? Then the guest leaves, and then after that, so not in, I don't mean practically in in actual in my daily life. As soon as I've stopped the pod, like, stopped record, I start then post production. I, I do it later in the week when I've got time. Um, but the po- there's the post production piece. So as you know, the, the body of this podcast, I. I don't edit this, right? So the only time any editing goes on in any way, shape or form, generally speaking, is bleeping or silencing out a, a sensitive bit of information that either the guest or I have mentioned. I've done it a couple of times in the past when I was starting out. Fucking hell. The green screen just dropped on the floor. Um, or the guest, you know, it's things like mentioning a name of someone who's serving or a de- some other detail that could really annoy someone if they'd heard they'd be mentioned on a public um, production like this or some other detail that could compromise someone's security, operational security, whatever. I'll go back and I'll, I'll bleep or silence that out. So the, but then, yeah, so the post-production. So I don't edit any of the body, but you've got to top and tail the podcast. It's called Top and Tailing. Put the intros on, put the outros on. 
for the video version, that's putting the, uh, yeah, there's an intro video, an outro video for YouTube. The YouTube version, if you listen to this, the YouTube version is slightly different to the audio version. On the YouTube version, you don't have the uh, sponsor intros and outros. Um, and so if you're watching this on YouTube and you've never listened to one of the podcasts, the audio version is slightly different. On the audio version, there are uh, sponsor intros and outros for the sponsors of the podcast. So, yes, a lot of work goes into it. Um, how the hell did I get on to that point? Guest, interviewee, uh, oh, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, that's why I was saying, for those who don't realise, you know, it's a, it's a hobby in inverted commas. I do this, a very time consuming, a very time consuming hobby. It's got so much momentum now, I can't, if I, if I stepped away, I think people would lynch me. So, gotta keep going, but I fucking enjoy it. Like, I, I, um, I'm under no illusion that this podcast, your support, the people who watch it, the people who listen to it, and the people who has, have enabled this podcast to continue, and things like this studio that I'm in now, uh, I mean, you know, I'm in a much better off place today than I was before I started the podcast. Generally, I you know I'm very fortunate to have a really good network of people that, that I've come to meet through the podcast. Very fortunate to be able to. Um, have uh, to be able to enable and support other initiatives and other charities and other fundraising and endeavors and other people's, you know, businesses and just through again, just through networking, giving them exposure where I can, donating money where I can. I try and donate money every month um, to uh, to a charity or to a fundraising um, to a fundraising endeavor via the podcast. I try and do that via the podcast every month. As is one of the things uh, when I set out with Jared when Jared first started this podcast with me and. He was episode, on episode one to ten with me co-hosting. That was that was always the aim from the start. Let's let's give back, and so we try and do that every month. Mm, anyway, I'm fucking I'm waffling on you. Um, there are questions. So I've been given questions, right? Uh, I put out on social media, uh, and in the in the H hour Discord server, uh, I think I did it via email as well. Anyone got any questions? Like I'm going to be in the hot seat. Send me some questions. So we got a bunch of questions, and also got asked to answer the icebreaker questions now most of you probably won't know what icebreakers are uh every i say most of you so my, my the h hour patrons will know what the icebreakers are so every guest that comes into the studio so for example the last guest i had on was uh, dr jenny murray before we recorded the podcast proper before that we we i interviewed jenny um a short interview based on eight questions that the patrons chose. So that's what the icebreaker consists of. It's a private interview with Jenny, this, an exam for example, with Jenny, uh, where she got asked these eight questions, she answers the eight questions, and then we stop. That is its own interview in its own right. It's called an icebreaker. Every, every guest gets asked the same eight questions. Oh, I don't want to go into the questions because you need to see the private videos to to, to, uh, to enjoy. They, they're good. They're good. They, we call them icebreakers because they serve as an icebreaker for the guests getting on to, getting into the podcast. Me and the guests starting to bounce off each other in the studio. And also, it's a little bit of a, an alternative insight into the guests. They're really interesting, really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, the icebreaker is uh, only available to H-Hour patrons. Um, so the patrons... I've asked me to answer the icebreaker questions that I ask the guest every 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 month, every week. So I'll do those as well. Um, I'm gonna, just going to flick into my into the Discord server. I'm going to the the patrons did also offer up some other questions. So I'm going to flick at the Discord server and go through their questions first, if that's okay with everybody. Not that anyone can uh, argue back because this is one way at the moment. <laughs> Maybe one day when we're when when we live stream in each episode or certain episodes, and you can bounce up and go, "Oi, stop talking! I got a question." But that is not today. Right. Let's have a look. Uh, uh, the Discord server, by the way, HR Discord server. Um, if you if you aren't aware of what Discord is, it's it's uh, it's hard to explain. It's like a hybrid of Slack, WhatsApp, um, uh, uh, like Facebook group. It's, it's a weird hybrid app that you get, but essentially it's for communities or all other sort of common interest or whatever. In this case, H Hour. It started out as a as a as an app that was that was pounced on by software developers and things like that for being productive and organize uh, organizing work and all of that. 
it's a really good tool for engaging with the community, any community. I first came across it through the Sin Eaters Guild, which you know of, I'm wearing the, one of their baseball caps right now. Sin Eaters Guild, their Discord server. Um, so anyone can join the H Hour Discord server. Uh, there's, there's a link in my Twitter bio. And also, if you go, I'm pretty sure, if you go onto the podcast website, charliecharlie1.com, there's a link on there to join the Discord server. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I tell you where there's a fucking link. There's a link, if you're watching YouTube, there's a link in the in the description of this video for the Discord server. I'm pr pretty confident. You can join it. It's free. And then in that HR Discord server, there are areas which are private. You, I don't think you can see them, but patrons can see them, and that's where the icebreakers go. Anyway, join it. It's good. It's good crack. It's good networking. There, there's all sorts of stuff and uh, areas now where you can, you know, if you've got a business, you there's areas now where you can go and introduce your business, tell us what it's all about. If you've got a charity, you can introduce it in there. If you've got a fundraiser, you can introduce it in there. And everyone becomes aware of it as a look at it, and it's really supportive. It's a really positive vibe in there. It's a mix of military, civilian, male, female. Um, all sorts. Get amongst it. Uh, anyway, I'm in there now. I'm literally looking at it on my phone. Oh, you can go on to it on your desktop as well. Page, uh, Discord. Discord.com, I think it is. I'll just get the app. Anyway, stop fucking waffling, Hugh. Get the questions out. Here we go. Where is it? So, excuse me, anyone who's listening and not watching, I'm just scrolling through my phone. Where the fuck are these questions? Here we go. Questions for Hugh. Okay. Top of the tree. This is from uh, one of the patrons, Alan Rankin. Alan's a, a lovely Scottish gentleman who lives in Scotland, funny enough. And he's a gentleman, funny enough. Alan Rankin asked, uh, okay, if you could get anyone on the podcast, who would it be and why? I, do you know what? When he posted this question, I thought about it. And, and, uh, and I remember, I forgot what I thought. This, it was two guests I'd have on. Uh, anyone on the podcast? I'd have Jordan Peterson. 100%. I'd have Jordan Peterson in here. Um, probably the only bloke I ever met. Any person. The only person who I ever met I'd probably get starstruck by. I think. Yeah, I don't I don't get starstruck. Uh, but I think really my would. And not, not because he's... Not... Well, yeah, maybe because he's famous, but not just because he's famous. It, because he's famous for helping people turn their lives around, which is, you know, he's one of the, he is definitely one of the key influences that um, helped me improve my situation uh, a few years back. In fact, within the first, in the first year of the podcast when I was doing that, uh, I was not in a good place. On air, I was, uh, I was, uh, I mean, if you watch those first, I don't know, 30 or 40 episodes seem absolutely fine probably to most people who don't know me uh, off air was a fucking car crash and uh, uh, Peterson so I read his book 12 Rules for Life um, and there was one or two well, there was one or two moments in that book where it was a, a penny drop for me and it just really turned my perspective on things uh, so he's one of the, he's not all of the influence, not everything that helped me turn things around. He is definitely one of them. So I'd have I'd have Jordan Peterson here. Um and who was the other person? I can't remember the other maybe I'll come back to that. There was another person. Good question though, Alan. Good question. Okay, next one. This is from Gav Tuak. Gav Tuak is a lovely English gentleman. He's also serving Royal Navy. Uh and uh and I take the piss out of him for that. His question is <laughs> not that uh <laughs> Being in the Royal Navy is a is something to be taken the piss out of. I have the utmost respect. I have the utmost respect for you, Gavin. Dead or alive, he asks. Dead or alive, who would you choose to go on a weekend bender to Benidorm with? Well, let's... Hang on a minute. Why is dead in there? I'm not going to choose anyone dead, Gavin. And I ain't going to fucking Benidorm, mate. Sorry, I'm not going to Benidorm. Did that once on a budget holiday many years ago. I'm not doing that again. So it's going to be a live person, and I'm not going to bet it. <laughs> I'm not going to bet it all. <laughs> it's not happening. I would go on the smash with the the people I trust most. Uh, the, yeah, I'd go on. I I take. Am I paying for this? 
because I ain't got the money. <laughs> I would take, I if I could pay for it, and I could give people a free holiday, I would take the people I trust and love and the closest and the, eh, man, not even necessarily closest to me, but I respect the most. So it'd be a, a small circle of people who I knew I could go away with, relax, and um, and and. There are people that I can't. I'm not going to go to list them all. Gav, you are one of them, right? I'm not going to go through and list them all. Okay, but uh, that's what I do. People are closest to me. It wouldn't be anyone famous. I just want to go away with a close group of friends somewhere, not fucking Benidorm, and just relax. That's it. Listen to music. I ban phones, ban technology, apart from music technology, and maybe films. In fact, you know where I go? This is not a plug, by the way. It's not a plug. I would go to Silverfield Villa. And I went here. Um, when did we go over there? Kate and I went. We got invited out to to go and uh, do some promotion for a new, uh, a new, I say lifestyle brand, like snowboarding, skiing brand company, which is which is veteran owned. And we got invited out there to go and do some promo stuff for them. And the lady who owns that company... Um, she also she also runs this place called Silverfield Villa. Now I think it's in Granada. It's in Spain somewhere. Uh, what a place! I mean, this I saw recently. She posted on online, and someone had referred to it as the uh, Iron Man House or the Tony Stark House. The Tony Stark House. Yeah, it's a fucking cool place. So that's what I do. Closest friends, closest friends, or people I respect the most, who are real fucking people that I know. Uh, and I, we go away, and we would just chill out. That's what we do. We spend time in the pool, on the indoor pool. We spend time in the outdoor pool. We spend time in the mountains. We would spend time chilling out. Just a gym there. There's a little cinema in there. Yes, Silverfield Villa were good people. So not Benidorm, but still Spain. Good question, Gav. Apart from the dead bit. Right. Next question. I'm, I'm just scrolling down. Just scrolling down. Okay. Uh, Chris Michaels from the Dark Side... The Dark Side Insta podcast. Chris has thought of two questions. So he says, question one, if you could go back to a moment in your life and change it, what would it be? Mm, nothing. So I, this is kind of related to reg regret, right, isn't it? Uh, and I'm, I'm, no, I wouldn't change anything. And the reason being... Is. So I alluded to earlier where I, I feel fortunate to be where I am now. I'm not, you know, I'm not loaded. I'm not by, by any means got any wealth. I've not got, you know, I've not got, uh, yeah, I'm not where I want to be. Like financially secure, uh, uh, all and all of that kind of jazz that you just think, okay, I can chill out now. I'm not, I'm not there where I want to be. But I am, I am in by no means a bad situation. It's a complicated situation. It's stressful <laughs> for many reasons, but it is not bad. It is not a bad situation whatsoever when you compare it to other people. So, you know, I've got a, an amazing partner. I've got amazing kids. Um, I alluded to that though, that network of people and friends and and um, and and just good, valuable personalities. Good, valuable people. I'm privileged to have in my life. So, if I went back and changed anything. If I could hypothetically go back and change anything, that would maybe jeopardise where I am now. It would it would perhaps alter alter that path, and I would not be where I am now. There'd be something missing. Maybe I wouldn't have met you know my my I wouldn't have met Kate, my partner. Maybe I maybe my relationship with my kids wouldn't be as it is now. Maybe uh, I wouldn't have met Kate. You know, I'm talking about Gav Tuak. Maybe I would have never met Gav Tuak. Maybe the fucking podcast would never started. You know. So uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go back and change anything. I wouldn't go back and change anything in my life. Um, I don't think. No. If I could change anything, I knew it would, it would change nothing now, and it wouldn't jeopardize the now. I would. Um, I would. Uh, bring back, oh, fucking hell, the people who, oh, 
Oh, shit. Sorry. <clears throat> I'd bring back the people who uh, aren't around now. So, young guys, friends who uh, got killed. I know, you know, I'll bring them back. And they come to, not fucking bad at all. <laughs> they come away too. They'd be around. <coughs> right. Question two. Who would you do, a, this is from Chris Michaels again. Who would you do a spiritual experience with? Mike Tyson or Joe Rogan? Uh, that would be Mike Tyson all day long. And the reason being, so Joe, I think he'd be a bit too straight laced with it. He's got loads of experience with it. He's a he's he's a very stable individual, right? And that's fine. <laughs> the time for that. But in terms of a psychedelic experience, my God, can you imagine sitting there on whatever it is, you know, doing mushrooms or doing acid or doing, I don't know, ayahuasca, something like that, with Mike Tyson. Not you know, be but just being there in the it would it would it would accentuate the experience. It would magnify the experience, you know. And he's a very, he, he is a, he's, a, he's, he's an enigma. I mean, look at who he is now to what he was before. How he perceives the world now and how he perceives himself now and how, uh, I'm going to use the word enlightened you, he is now compared to what he was before. Um, man, I'd love to, I mean, just just tap into that. You know, incredible guy. So it'd be, it'd be Mike Tyson, Chris. That's it, it'd be. Okay. <clears throat> Dave Davis, another patron. Dave is also another, uh, an English gentleman. Uh, top bloke. Does loads of work for charity. Uh, first met Dave. I th first met him through the company I work for in Massa and Team Rubicon UK, as it was at the time. I think that's right, Dave, is it not? We got interview introduced via Team Rubicon UK, which is now uh, React Disaster Response. Dave has asked, uh, are there any guests I wouldn't interview? I thought about this quite a few times, you know. No, there's not. There's, there's, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not going to be specific on names because I, I don't because I would potentially interview anyone. If 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 the setup was right, and if I thought that the production to so the podcast would be of benefit, right? Uh, but there are certain people I would only interview in the right circumstance. So, for example, I you know I hate giving this example. There was an opportunity previously. Um, not that I was looking for the opportunity, but it's, it was one of these where a guest got suggested and there was and a connection to them could be made, as in I could be put in touch. And it this particular guest, this is three years ago, was uh, Tommy Robinson, right? I mean, I am not a fan of Tommy Robinson, right? Uh, but I, what, one of the things they do do is they try and work hard to understand why people are who they are. Whether they're good or bad, motivations, especially especially people I perceive to be like just generally bad people or bad for the world, right? Tommy's one of those people. Um, he's also a very intelligent individual, right? And this is one of the things. This is one of the things that always strikes me, where you get get someone who is obviously it, there is intelligent. They are intelligent in some capacity, in some way, shape, or form. They are switched on. Uh, and yet they hold a view, I think, man, you know, that does not, that having that view or that stance or that, or or acting like that, and just generalizing our people, uh, does not tie in with how intelligent you seem to be. Tommy was one of those. Um, and so I did, I did, I, I did look to set that up. It was in the early stages of looking to set that up. The first thing was having some conversations with people uh, and going, you know, people I trust, talking to them about the podcast and saying, what do you think about this? Um, and when I was first, when I <laughs> when you name drop someone like Tommy Robinson as a potential guest in the podcast, it doesn't get reacted to very well. <laughs> but I explain my rationale in thinking about it. And, and, uh, and my rationale for him was... Um, 
I thought, okay, I basically thought I could... So one thing I, I wanted to really understand, is he actually racist? Because he seems to me he's very racist. Is he actually racist or is it something else? Because he says he's not, right? He says he's not. Um, or is he something else? So I wanted to have the opportunity to sit in front of him and sort of dissect him and go, hmm, okay, let's see what this guy's like. And probably also, if I'm being honest with myself, in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, we can have a little, bit of an expose here uh, and make, just make it, I, 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 could, I could, in my delusions of grandeur, I could I could get him to uh, just make himself look a complete bellend. Um, however, with further thought, I realised, actually, he is, uh, he is very knowledgeable on... He seems to be very knowledgeable. He can talk the talk on things and all of those things that he brings up that uh, he he uses evidence of uh, of people who are, who are not white uh, being absolute bastards. So you know, crime statistics and and abuse and stuff like that. I'm not saying that stuff's incorrect, but he he seems to attribute that to a skin color, uh, which which is that is not good. That is completely that's fucking racist, right? And I'm not on board with that. Um, but because he's got a depth knowledge and he's very basically very focused in this one area. That's his whole life is all ab all about. Well, you never knows what Tommy Robinson's about, and I don't have that depth of knowledge in any of it. So when I thought through, there was no way I'd be able to hold a discussion with him or a debate with him, or to be able to um, uh, throw back to him and encounter any of his claims because I've got the knowledge, and so it wouldn't have gone well. Um, not that I'm looking to be, not that I'd be looking to be. Oh, I'm the wi I was the winner of that interview. Not all. It's it wouldn't have been a balanced discussion, right? At all. So the only so the reason I'm saying about this is the I thought the, right the only way I would do that and interview him and I, I caveat this with I have now decided I won't interview him uh, because of time gone. Oh, so there's an answer for you. No, I won't interview Tommy Robinson. But for examples like him going forward. Uh, not him. He's so divisive. Not him. But people who have got a very, uh, who are very focused on one area, who I maybe necessarily don't dis I don't agree with. Uh, vegan activists, for example, right? That I would, I would get someone else in the studio, uh, who has got an alternative point of view, well knowledge in the all, in the opposite side, and I would more or less act as the mediator on the in between, and and be, and make sure it's a balanced discussion. Make sure there's no one thr throwing the teddies at the pram, and have a nice, good, balanced discussion. So, yes. Uh, uh, so I answered the question. Tommy Robinson, you can fuck off. That's my answer, Dave. Um, yeah, it's gone beyond now. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's just. The more I've looked into it, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of. Um, a lot of nastiness there and a lot of uh, deceit on his part. Okay. Oh, no. They're, so they're the questions from the patrons. So I got... There are two questions on Twitter. I'll come back to them on the next one, though. Uh, on the next time I do this. But now we're going to go to the icebreaker questions. So as I mentioned before, these are the questions that are on the H Hour Icebreakers. So if you want to get access to H Hour Icebreakers where every single guest gets asked these, you need to become a patron. Go to charliecharlie1.com and uh, click become a patron. Easy peasy. Okay. Question number one. For the icebreaker questions. What are you currently reading? I am... All right, so I'm currently reading... Oh, drop my phone. i got two books on the go. I'm reading one on my Kindle and I am... Um, Listening to one on audiobook. The one on my Kindle is called Stalin uh, by a guy called Robert Service. I think it's by Robert Service. And it is about Stalin, funny enough. Uh, who he was, his life, from when he was born, to what they know about it, from when he was born up to his death, all the way through. It is a, it is a very, very good insight into a, a dictator like that. It's a very good insight into how some of them can, be, can become so unhinged because he wasn't like mental you know when he was young he wasn't normal but he wasn't crazy he wasn't the Stalin that you remember or that a lot of people know of now as being this murderous psychopath um, he was almost normal uh, and it's a really interesting insight into Soviet Russia communism socialism um, 
an explanation of that kind of politics as well, where the roots of it are Marxism and Leninism. So yes, I, that's what I'm reading in the Kindle and on the audio book. I'm listening to a book called, uh, recommended by Gaz Walsh, so a book called Sovereign Individual. Sovereign Individual is written by Jason, uh, Jason, not fucking Jason, Jacob Rees-Mogg's dad, right? Now, regardless of what you may think of the Tories or Jacob Rees-Mogg, his dad is Lord William Rees-Mogg. I've just pulled the book up on Audible in front of me. Uh, and it was, and James Dale Davidson also wrote it. So this is about, uh, ma in how they call it, mastering the transition to the information age. It's all, it's about them predict it. So based on history, it's, it's a really good historical book as well, actually. Based on history, their understanding of politics, geopolitics, uh, economics, all sorts of stuff. Society, all sorts of stuff. Uh, how they predict uh, what they call the information age. Well, yeah, the information age is going to change the way governments do things, individuals do things, uh, wealthy people do things, working class do things. It's it's going to change the face of the planet, basically. Uh, oh, it's, uh, well, the developed nations at least. Um, now this was. Re this was written in the 90s, 98, I think. Holy shit. When you listen to this book, man, they got a lot of stuff right. There's still some predictions are going to come to fruition. For example, there's things in there they're talking about. They're talking about, what do they call it? They don't call it cryptocurrency. They call it um, cyber cyber money or cyber currency. They talk, there's all sorts of stuff. And you go, wow, wow. It is really, really good. Really, really good. Highly recommend the sovereign individual. Listen to that. Or, or read it. Okay, question number two of the icebreaker questions. We'll pull them back up. <clears throat> What's your favourite film? My favourite film is Interstellar. Interstellar. I haven't had a favourite film for a long time. I've always thought, oh, there's so many, I can't pick between them. When I do, there's loads of films. My top ten list is like, it's actually about 100 films in there probably. <laughs> but my number one film is absolutely Interstellar. Bar none, bar none, Interstellar, closely followed by um, the new Blade Runner. Controversial, because I like the old Blade Runner, the new Blade Runner. Yeah, so Interstellar. What a film! What a film! I mean, I'm a big fan of 2001: A Space Odyssey, the film and the book. Uh, big fan of sci-fi. A big fan of uh, what's his name? Who's in that film? Matthew McConaughey. Uh, 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 Jessica Chastain's in it Michael Caine's in it uh, Anne Hathaway's in it oh, who else? Oh, Matt Damon's in it but I don't like him but Interstellar all the way what, what a film uh, question number three what is your beverage of choice? right non-alcoholic is going to be coffee but I, try, I have to be careful because if I drink too much go it just doesn't help me focus <laughs> at all. Uh, and alcohol is going to be... Uh, I'll drink anything, man. Uh, I like whiskey. I do I do like a good whiskey. And I like ale. No. Yeah, I never used to. But no, uh, spend a lot of time in Warwickshire. And there, there's lots of ale around here. And I've discovered ale. The joy of ale and all the different flavours. And, and, uh, and breweries and uh, types. Yeah. Okay, question number four. What are your go-to brands of choice? Well, I've got a Sin Eaters Guild cap on right now. Sin Eaters Guild is definitely my go-to brand. Uh, not, it's one of my go-to brands. It's the main go-to brand, I think. Yeah. Um, so what do, I, what do I wear mostly? I wear Sin Eaters Guild stuff. I wear Forces Barbarian stuff. And I wear Osprey stuff. Yeah. But Osprey is just because I've been given a lot of Osprey's kit. Uh, I know someone at the club. Uh, if he's listening to this, I can't, I can't, I can't say who he is actually because he'll probably get sacked. <laughs> Give me, they're giving me free shit. Um, anyway, Forces Barbarians and Sinita's Guild. But I do like, so I, I do like to buy from other. Uh, veteran on brands um, just to support them if I see something cool yeah let's get that uh, and not just British veteran on brands like anywhere if it's some yeah, the, the military community extends beyond the borders of the UK you know I think uh, I think so it's, I think it's important to um, 
support us, that community, everywhere. So, anyway, Senators Guild, probably. Question number five, who are your inspirations? <clears throat> I've got a lot, I've got a lot. Got a lot. It's family. It's family members, really. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna include my uh, my missus in that. Uh, yeah. Disciplined people. Focused people. Uh, people who, like my oh my old man, my dad, for example, overcome like extreme adversity, uh, extremely dire situation uh, to turn everything around. So he's a recovering alcoholic. And uh, instead of, instead of what some people can become trapped in, in situations like that is wallowing in their own self pity and going, Oh, oh, I ruined my life or fucking whatever. No, my dad is not like that. He's like, he hasn't ruined his fucking life. He's just, Turned a corner on it, you know, uh, and he is, he is, <laughs> he's, he's, I think he'd probably, I, he's live well, from, from what I see anyway, he's a very happy man, and, uh, he's living life to the fullest, and, uh, and I would never have seen that come in, uh, where he, six years ago, uh, six, yeah, six years ago, didn't think he'd be around now, I didn't think he'd still be around now, and he very nearly wasn't, so, uh, yeah, family, well, man. No misses. My kids. I think these are all cliche answers, but I, I mean it. You know, so my kids. Um, uh, so you, you know, they're dealing with uh, divorced parents. The parents separated. You know, I'm I'm not married to their mum anymore. Uh, and I and uh, it's that's any any kid who goes through any form of, of shit situation like that. You know, or they lose a parent, or they lose a sibling, or something like that. It's just fucking horrendous, and there, you know, and there's many, many, many kids who have who, who go through a difficult, real difficult time, and uh, they seem to be handling it well. It's not easy, or not easy for them. They seem to be handling it well, and um, and I admire that, uh, and it and it's definitely inspirational. You know, you look at, I think whenever you look at people who, you know. You know there's something challenging in their life, or or challenging things in their life, or you know they struggle with some stuff, and yet they still are able to be really highly functioning, be really productive, be really focused. Yeah, they they are inspirations, absolutely. Um, there's loads, there's loads of people. I mean, there's loads of people. I know. So there, there we go. I'll stop there. Question number six: Who annoys you? Who makes you angry? This is easy. People who are unwilling to uh, consider, uh, who, people who have hold an opinion and are completely unwilling to change their mind in that opinion, even if they got presented with information or evidence that w explained to them and showed them without without question that the opinion or th or or uh, perspective they hold was fucking wrong. Even in that state, they would not change their mind. Because they're so committed to whatever whatever that thing is that they're holding on to, they're so blindly committed to it that they they, they refuse to accept anything else. That is mental, and there seems to be at the moment loads of people like that in politics, in uh, ideologies, in all sorts of stuff. It's mental. It's mental. Like you need to be open to the possibility that you are not correct. <laughs> that what you think now is not correct. So uh, there's stuff I think now, right? And I guarantee some of it is not correct. I'm going to find that out in the future in some way, shape or form. I need to be open to that and accept that because as you grow, you learn from mistakes. You know, that old that old uh, uh, phrase, you learn from mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. And so when you discover, well, basically, when you find out you're wrong about something or there's some information that makes you question what you think, you go, oh God, that doesn't tell you what I thought about this thing or that that idea or that um person or organization or x y or z when that happens and you learn something new that isn't a bad thing first off 
you've learned something new. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> like, uh, we knowledge is power. Knowledge helps you succeed in life. Knowledge helps you be prepared for risk, for issues, for hardship, for uh, unexpected situations. That's what knowledge does. Um, and it helps you. To, it helps you to help other people. Absolutely. You know the. Uh, so. It's a good thing. Don't be afraid of learning new stuff. That challenges what you think. Be open to changing your mind. Because if you're not open to changing your mind, you're fucking mental. You're going to live a very miserable life. A very miserable life. Uh, and uh, yeah, those people piss me off. <laughs> I'm stop there. There are other people, but that's it. There are other people. Um, question number... Seven. Based upon your experience, what's the one piece of advice you give a sixteen-year-old you? Hmm. What would you tell sixteen-year-old you? Uh, it would be to take up a combat sport or martial art, uh, and that is because. I had really low self confidence and low self esteem when I was young. I was like shockingly bad, shockingly bad. Uh, man, I couldn't look people in the eye. Didn't like, didn't like having conversations with people. I was just, I mean, shy isn't the word. It was something different to shy. I don't know why I was like that. You know, my parents aren't like that. My sister's not like that. Uh, so I don't know where it came from. Um, but what I know now is. So I, I actually, I'd, I'd, I struggled with that self-confidence thing right into uh, quite far into my military career. Uh, my sh quite far into my short military career. Um, and one of the, so one of the, th I ended up starting just doing different martial arts uh, when I was working, after I left the military and was working in the Middle East and was fortunate to be around some, like a Muay Thai guy, a boxing guy, a jiu-jitsu guy, and, and we were, do different things uh training wise and i was learning um and it it uh i found that not that i had a self-confidence problem then but i found that it impacted my self-confidence it elevated it slightly and it made me more comfortable in in the face of like conflict you know in those situations where man is this going to turn into a fight or in situations where it's a heated argument or anything, you know, things like that. Um, it helped me to, I think, deal with those situations better. Not, uh, as in, I wasn't bothered about them escalating, which means you're calmer, and which means other people around you are calmer, which means it's less likely to uh, um, escalate to violence, right? And the other thing is um, just self confidence in general for it. I think if you're able to, everyone should be able to defend themselves properly. Right, and regardless of who you think you are, I think if you've if you've not done any, you know, unless you've been scrapping in the streets since you, you grew up, if you've not done any sort of training or yeah, in any in any sort of combat sports, then in a in a in a problem um, where someone is trying to hurt you, you're not going to be able to defend yourself, male and female, you know. Uh, and so it's imp I think it's, that's important for everyone to learn. It's a really interesting thing to know how much when you understand how much what level of pain or harm you can inflict on someone else it makes you understand what other people can do to you and that's a really sobering experience um and it's really important for kids i think as well there's also a discipline aspect so yeah 16 year old you go and take up a martial art not to fill people in but to just elevate your confidence confidence a little bit uh yeah that is my advice right Last question. Have I ever had an un unexpected surprise and found myself in immediate danger and feared for my life and others around me? How did I cope and the people I was with cope and deal with the situation? Um, yeah, lo lots of these, obviously, from when I was serving. Um, hmm. Preparation is the thing, yeah. So... When I say preparation, I mainly mean, we're mainly again talking about knowledge. So, in understanding the threats or the risks that you may be faced with in in whatever situation, 
in, in, in my case, you know, military, uh, different situations, uh, it allows you to prepare for them through understanding more about them, understanding uh, what what actions you could you could take in those situations to overcome the situation to uh, succeed to survive um, and to do above and beyond that uh, you know achieve a mission for example uh, and and also that then informs you what what training preparation you need to do for that I mean we just went back to the we just go back to the uh, the previous question uh, martial arts right so taking up a combat sport all that is is preparation for adversity preparation for physical physical conflict right um and so yeah that's all that is it's knowledge and training and so you're not you're less bothered then about the situation if it's going to occur when it does occur you've got a much better understanding of what to do and so you better you've got a better chance of survival um yeah that's how that's how i got through it so those situations i knew what i had to do I was very well prepared, trained very well, very well prepared. I knew, uh, I knew what the enemy's intent was. I knew what. So there we go. I knew what the threat and the risk was, and I knew what actions I could take, the best actions I could take to overcome the situation, to 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 improve the situation. Uh, yeah, so preparation. What bothers you? Like, there's something. It, every not every, definitely not everyone, but. What what scares you? What bothers you? You know, what are you afraid of? Are you a person who's afraid of ever getting to a scrap? Are you afraid? Are you a person who's afraid of um, of a car crash? Are you a person who's afraid of X, Y, or Z? You can you can prepare for those things. Uh, I mean, the, the car crash example. If you if that's something, like, there are people who are really nervous driving, right? You know, and if that's something you're really nervous about, then you you can never mitigate against the, f- the other fool on the road, right? You can be the best driver in the world. You can be the best driver in the world. That doesn't mitigate it. mitigate against the moron coming the other way on the road who's not paying attention, swerves and crashes into you. There's nothing, there's nothing you can do about that. But you know, you can uh, you can stick a first aid kit in the car. You can maybe take some first aid training. You can put yourself on a driving course if you want. There are actually there are actually free driving courses you can do in different parts of the country to improve your driving for free. The council pay for them, the local the local fire authority sometimes pay for them, I think. Yeah. Uh but the point I'm making is preparation, knowledge. Uh don't let yourself if there's something that bothers you and you and you're afraid of it, it gives you a bit of anxiety. Think about how can you reduce that slightly? How can I improve it? So if that situation occurs, I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a better position than I would be right now. Um man is waffling on there. Fucking car crash, what man about? Uh <laughs> Right, that is icebreaker questions. That is icebreaker questions done. The other questions done. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe a little bit of a, an insight into me, a little, a little bit more. I'm sure though, people who've listened, there are lunatics who've listened to every single podcast. They know who I am. They've got a good idea. But if you haven't, now you have. They have got a good idea. I think. Hopefully, hopefully you still like me. Hopefully, you, yeah. Hopefully you stick around for the next episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. Please, if you if you listen to this on iTunes, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, subscribe, please. Um, become a patron. Become a patron of the podcast. You're missing out. Get hold of the icebreakers. We also have uh, so uh, there's also monthly Zoom calls with the patrons. So myself and the patrons on the call, we shoot the shit. Literally, just like 45 minutes an hour of just just banter going back and forth. It's good. They're good people. They're a good community. But also, I try and get in occasionally. So we'll get a previous guest who's been on the podcast. We'll get them onto the Zoom call as well and have a private Q and A. So we've had Maylie Chapin on, uh, Chapin, Maylie Chapin on the on the on the pod, on the call. We've had uh, on the Zoom call. Who else have we had on? We had loads of people. I'm trying to think. But yeah, to my point, become a, become a patron. Uh, oh, you get access to all the podcasts earlier than everyone else as well. CharlieCharlieOne.com is the website, right? Um, oh, hang on. Whatever you're listening to or watching this on now, in the blurb is a link to Patreon. And you can sign up there. That's it. Keep an eye on the social media, HR podcast social media, because next time this happens, uh, whenever it happens, I'll put a shout out there for the for the uh, questions. If you're a patron, obviously you know there's a there's a specific area in the Discord channel you can uh, you can hit put the questions in there, and 
Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Yeah, let's keep it going. The podcast, I mean, is growing on a daily basis. It's mad. It's, it's fucking crazy. Uh, it's been in the UK charts nonstop for at least at least 18 months now. And any one given day, so if I look now, today it's in, it's charting in multiple countries, right? So today it is charting in, uh, so I mean, it's crazy, you wouldn't have thought it's okay. So obviously it's charting in the UK, it's charting in Norway, it's charting in Ireland, it's charting in New Zealand, uh, where else? Norway, Ireland, New Zealand, and South Africa today. You were a part of that, listening to it, watching it, you helped out. And it's, because it, it's getting to more people. You know, the guests that come onto this podcast, their fucking story is incredible. The knowledge and experience they can impart on people and impart on me is useful. Very useful. It helps people through life. I really believe that's why I started the podcast. Um, so the more people it reaches, the better, you know. So uh, share the podcast. Tell your mates about it. Share the post if you're on social media. Um, and that is it. Thank you again. Until next time. Out. That's it. Thank you for watching H Hour. If you enjoyed this episode, why not become a H Hour patron? H Hour patrons get exclusive access to premium content with guests like the one you just watched. There are private interviews with previous guests and with this guest that nobody will see except for the H Hour patrons. So before this podcast was recorded, I recorded an exclusive Q&A, a shorter interview structured around eight questions. All the questions were chosen by patrons beforehand, and that interview is online now for patrons. That happens every time. Patrons also get access to all of the episodes before anyone else. They get advanced viewing of the episodes. And you also get other perks and bonuses. All of the information is on charliecharlie1.com. Just hit the menu item, become a patron. It'll show you everything there, including access to the H-Hour Discord community and private patron-only channels on there. So go to charliecharlie1.com and hit the menu item, become a patron. Easy peasy. If you prefer to listen to your podcast normally, H-Hour is also on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, it's on all of the podcast apps. And if you don't even want to bother with a podcast app, you can go to the, the H-Hour website, charliechannel1.com, and you can actually play the podcast, video or audio, directly through the website, through your browser. Simples. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a supporter. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next episode. Thank you.